Hi everyone. This is uh, Piotr. Piotr or Peter? Piotr? Yeah, He's right. from uh, from Poland, I think, right? Right there, yeah, Poland, Warsaw. Yes, very good. And he just uh, finished the Camino. I think the Camino Frances. Is that right? Camino Frances. But yeah. when did you finish? Was that, because we were supposed to meet up in person, but we had to reschedule, and now we're doing on Skype. I think yeah, it was. Yeah. I finished on. Uh, I, I think it, I finished on the sixteenth of uh, October. So. Yeah. Three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Of course, things were a little bit different then than uh, it is now. How was it for you? How was your experience of walking the Camino de Santiago now? Yeah, it was. I think it was really great. Uh, it was my first Camino, so I can't really compare uh, to a usual year or a normal year. Uh, but I worked with uh, some uh, colleagues, uh, friends uh, who did it, uh, you know, for the fifth, sixth time, and they said the experience is really quite different uh, because uh, you know fewer people, and uh, and I think the people who decided to walk Camino this year uh, were in some way determined to do it. So, so also I think uh, uh, you know the the companionship was really was really very good. Uh, yeah, I walked from uh, San Juan de Port uh, to Santiago, uh, just over four weeks, and uh, it was really great experience. And uh, it was enough people to to feel okay and and to have uh, uh, friends uh, on the way every day. At the same time, it wasn't really crowded at any point. Maybe the last 100 kilometers, uh, there were. Uh, quite a lot of, uh, I think, Spanish people joining for the last uh, for the last. Uh, uh, had, yes. To get Compostela. Yes. Uh, so it, it, it became a little bit more crowd, you know, crowded. A little bit more people on the way, uh, and and you could see them and hear them. Yeah. But uh, but it was really great experience for me this year. Good. This was your first Camino. That was my first Camino. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So how was it traveling from Poland to France when you traveled? Were there any problems then or did you, did no, you just take a no. train or fly? Yeah, no, yeah. I, 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 I flew from Warsaw to Paris and then I took uh, TGV uh, to, to Bayonne and then a normal train. And uh, it was really, you know, uh, it was a long day for me, but uh, it was really very smooth and uh, no troubles, no problems. On That's the way. good. That's on good. Those, I talked to a few. Of course, we are recording this on November the 10th. I talked to a few pilgrims that arrived in Santiago on today's Tuesday it was on Friday. So four or five days ago, and they were saying that they felt like when they were walking that the Camino was kind of closing behind them as they were walking to Santiago. Did you have a feeling of 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 being one of the la the last ones kind of before because now Spain is pretty much closed. No, 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 not at all. I think uh, I think the experience was probably similar to people who walked a couple of weeks uh, before me. Uh, so you know, uh, quite a few albergues were closed, and yeah. uh, one on one or two days we had to uh, call albergues in advance to make a booking or just to make sure that you know this one or that one is open. Hmm. Uh, but I think that experience was probably pretty much the same like for people who walked uh, sometime late in August or early September. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't really feel that anything is closing behind me. Maybe other than uh, we left Leon uh, and it was like, uh, I think early days of October, late September, early days of October. And, and then uh, two days later or three days later, they imposed some sort of a soft lockdown on Leon and I think it was the first the very first moment that we felt that the situation is getting probably worse hmm. uh, compared to the summertime uh, but then we we were able to walk uh, till Santiago without any yeah. without any trouble yeah so so uh, yeah, it worked. It worked really very well for us. For us. Yeah. Good, good. So you were able to form a group. You walked together, a group of you, all the way, or did you mix? Yeah, I met. I, I met some people. I, I traveled alone, and mm -hmm. I think there is, you know, there is a the, the two benefits of walking alone. I think are that one, you have complete freedom to to set your schedule every day. Yeah. And secondly, I think it's easier to integrate uh, with other people. Yeah. Uh, 
compared to when you are in a group. Uh, so, so two benefits, but then, then you know, um, you 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 tend to meet the same faces. Uh, if not every day, then every second or third day, you you tend to sleep in the same albergues, uh, yeah. you know, have lunch or have dinner together. Uh, so, so the first two or three weeks, I was kind of working together with with uh, two or three Spanish people and uh, two or three German people. And then the last uh, the, the last ten days, I met a very nice uh, Swiss uh, gentleman, and uh, and then we we kind of managed to build relationship very quickly, and and we walked together for the last ten days. Uh, so so enough people to to get friends, yeah, and, and to yeah. make friends, but uh, not not too many people. To, That's good, to yeah, to because. Walk. Because normally, in a normal year, you would have walked with <laughs> hundreds, if not, you know, yeah. a lot of people. Uh, yeah. Now, did you feel like the locals that you got in touch with were welcoming pilgrims? Or did you feel like they were worried about having someone from outside of Spain or outside of their village coming into their village, you know, thinking about the virus and everything? How, how, did, how were you treated? Well, I think the most, I mean, you know, when I had face to face contact and I could speak with people and they knew I'm coming from abroad, I, everyone was really very welcoming and I, I didn't, uh, I didn't feel, you know, any sort of uh, distance. Yeah. Uh, uh, however, however, walking through some villages or some small, small places, uh, people were very cautious. Some people were very cautious. They, they were putting masks on and they were kind of trying to keep distance from us, the walkers. Mm -hmm. but, but they didn't know that we are, you know, from Spain or France or Poland. So I think yeah. it wasn't really related to my nationality. Or yes. Being foreigner, but just these people were very much concerned about yeah. security and, and you know, yeah. concerns. So, um, how did you feel? How did you feel that the security was like when you went into an albergue or a hotel or pension or whatever you stayed? Was it, was it the, the procedure? Was it was it something that you felt comfortable with? Yeah, yeah. I, I think in most places they they followed uh, they followed procedures. In some places they were more I would say relaxed uh, about this. But but in most places yes they did follow procedures and uh, I, I felt really secure and safe throughout throughout the journey mm -hmm. uh, I think much more than uh, if, if I were kind of you know commuting to my work every day here in Warsaw on a public transport yeah you you meet uh, just you meet you know you, I, I met uh, not too many people in the first place in these albergues on bars on the way and then uh, people were were you know wear masks and uh, most of the day anyway we were spending outside yeah walking with just a few people and and uh, so I didn't really feel concerned about my my health I didn't meet anyone uh, who got infected or who was infected on the mm -hmm. way I, I know that one colleague uh, one colleague got infected when she went back uh, to Germany but I think she got infected after uh, after I saw her maybe two weeks after I saw her last time so okay so I, I'm aware of one person that got infected uh, a pilgrim but mm -hmm. but at the same time she stayed she stayed and volunteered to work in an albergue uh, for a week or so, and maybe this is when she, when, when she, mm. when she I don't know. Yeah. But people who walked, people who walked with me, and uh, I had touch with uh, for those uh, uh, almost five weeks, uh, no one really got uh, infected. Yeah, that's good. That's good, because of course that's one of the the things that people are worried about. That's why also I asked about the locals because they may be worried that someone who is infected will walk and then walk, carry yeah. the virus yeah, with them. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so it seemed like you had a good time because it, it doesn't it doesn't look doesn't sound like a very normal Camino to to walk with such a small group and enjoy enjoy Spain, you know, s with so few people. It's it's uh, I, it's it must have been a great experience to yeah to do yeah. it yeah so yeah. you arrived to santiago how was how was arriving uh the cathedral I'm, i don't know if you were inside but it's it's of course it's of course very empty but of course it's you know being re, you know rebuilt now or of or, or cleaned up and the pilgrim's office and how was that a whole experience coming into santiago yeah i think it was a you know a, a very a very smooth experience in the sense that uh, again not too many people the 
the the the, the you know the plaza uh, uh, before the cathedral was almost empty yeah and we arrived i think we arrived around two or three o'clock in the afternoon and it was really pretty much empty the cathedral was empty i went i went into cathedral um later in the afternoon and it was really empty uh, there were maybe you know two or three other pilgrims visiting at the time yeah and then uh, the the pilgrims office to get my compostela i waited maybe you know 10 minutes and and there were you know maximum you know 10 15 people uh, inside and waiting outside together so so really really easy i was in spain uh, and in santiago last year for my holidays mm -hmm. and it was really crowded you know i was in a sense i was I wouldn't say disappointed with Santiago, but I was overwhelmed with with the number of people. You know, we couldn't find place to sit and have lunch. We yeah. couldn't really see anything in the cathedral. It was really very crowded. Yeah. And, and I didn't. And then when I left Santiago a year ago, I, I didn't have really like a good feeling. Mm. And and this year, when I was walking, you know, we we spent two days in Santiago, so visiting cathedral, walking on the streets, having you know lunch, dinner, I could. I could see the walls, you know. I mean, I could see the city because last year I couldn't see anything. I was struggling to get through on the yes. street. And this year it was really, uh, I really enjoyed Santiago this year. And it's really beautiful, beautiful place. Very yeah, nice place. It, it's very, it, it's a nice, it's a very nice place. And, and it's for someone who lives here, I tell many people many times it's during the summer i feel like the city is not our anymore you know it's exactly. it's for the visitors that own the city and then in the winter when people go home then that's when you feel you get the city back Be so i can i can uh, i can relate to this very well with my experience from last year and this year yeah i mean last year you didn't own the city in the summertime and this yes year it much, yes because during even during a normal year in the winter you could walk on the square and, and you could find yourself being the only one yeah. during a normal year which is which is uh, which i think is great because it then then you really get as you see as you say you can get the chance to really enjoy it you know yeah Good. So, so any other experiences that you had dur during your walk that that you want to tell people about? So, people, nice people you met, or someone, a nice place you stayed at, or anything in particular yeah. that you want to tell us about? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, there were a few albergues. I really, I really loved mm -hmm. uh, on the way with really, you know, very accommodating uh, uh, owners and and and. Um, not always in the you know not always located in the in the places where most people would finish the day uh, mm -hmm. because sometimes sometimes uh, they are located uh, you know a few kilometers before or after the usual the usual uh how do you call it uh yeah the, the stops usual stops the, the usual, where the, the, the guidebooks yeah if you, if you follow the guidebook yes so yeah. That was one of the recommendations that I got from my from my friend. She lives in Spain and she's been walking Camino for a few times. And she said to me that, you know, if you plan your walk, then uh, try to stay outside of the usual uh, start finish mm -hmm. uh, places because yeah. then your experience can be quite different. Of course, this year this year it was uh, slightly more difficult because uh, many albergers outside of this usual places were closed. Yeah. So, so you had to make sure in advance that uh, that, that they stay open. But uh, some of them were really amazing, you know, very very nice. And you had uh, you had maybe maybe ten people inside, yeah, um, being together. And then you know the the dinner is also very nice then uh, because you you can really have conversation with everyone and you all sit at one table. So, so, so that was really. I, I think you know, walking in this year was uh, for this reason was also I think special because the relationship was much, much closer. You know, you, yeah. you saw you know this maybe, fifteen twenty people on the way, and and you basically managed to have good relationship with everyone to get to know everyone, which which I think is quite is, is quite unusual probably because it's not hundreds of of people walking. You know. Yeah. Did you book way. anything ahead or did you just walk into town and see what was open or how, how did you plan that? Yeah, I had to, we had to, we had to book, uh, I say we because we were walking together, uh, like a few people together. We had to book uh, one night uh, and it were, it, this were the last five um, 
beds uh, in an albergue uh, on the way. Uh, but otherwise, uh, that was the only the only incident that you know. And people were then coming later and, and knocking on the door, and uh, it was full, and they had to mm. continue walking uh, or go back uh, because there were no no more other places in this little village. Uh, yeah. But other than that, uh, normally we were walking into the city or into the village and just going directly to Alberga and yeah. uh, yeah. without any problem. Great. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you for sharing your uh, your story and, and your experience. And uh, are you? Do you think you're going to come back and do another walk, another year? Well, I mean, you know, if uh, if Camino <laughs> calls me, <laughs> yes, then, then probably then probably yes. But you know, it's been very rewarding rewarding journey. You know, I, yeah. I think I got more than I expected. Uh, so so maybe maybe I need uh, you know one or two or three years to internalize everything I got and and come back with new experiences. Yes. But at the same time, I met quite a few people that are going there every year. So and, and this friend of mine who lives in Spain, she goes she goes every year and and maybe she walks a different route or uh, you know different distances, but but she walks every year. So I think I think. Uh, uh, there must be something in Camino that calls you, and and uh, I I look forward to see if this is next year or maybe some years uh, some years uh, later. Very good. Well, thank you for talking to us, uh, Piotr. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Ivar, and uh, all the best and good luck. Uh, and, thank you. Uh, yeah, Th I'm sure we'll be in touch. <laughs> yes, be in touch. Next time you come to Santiago, you should stop by again. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you. you so much. Ciao, ciao.